Hey y'all, let's take a look at sets today, lesson five. A set is basically a collection of numbers and each number in the set is called an element. And this is the notation that you'll see. Number one, sets are often given a letter name and the letter is often italicized. And the set notation looks like this with that kind of funky looking, you know, kind of parentheses around. Now we could look at this and go, this is the set of 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now we could name this you know, all the numbers between five and 25 that are divisible by five or counting by five. Okay, there's another one. Set B, you could say this is two, four, six, eight, and 10. And we could just call that, oh, those are the numbers, the even numbers uh, between two and 10 inclusively. Another set. Okay. Um, make, make sure you need to memorize these sets that we're going to talk about next. These are three important number sets. Uh, either memorize them, now make sure you're doing this each lesson, like there's your notebook paper, put a five here, and make sure that you have these down. You want to memorize, absolutely have these, have these down in your head, what they mean, these sets of numbers. So make sure you do that. Okay, here they are, all right? First set is called a natural or counting numbers, numbers that you naturally count with. And that set looks like this. There's our spunky looking, uh, parenthesis there. We have one, two, three, and then I'm just putting an ellipsis there to indicate we just go on forever. Okay. All right. The whole numbers. And again, this is the set of the whole numbers. This time it starts with a zero and a one and a two and a three and you just keep going in forever. Okay. All right. Integer. An integer is a different type of number. Sometimes uh, when we're outside of math, we'll call an integer a whole number. But that's not exactly the correct definition. It's like a whole number, but it looks like this. Let's set our set and let's go from the negative infinity going towards zero. And we'll go negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and, and on to infinity there. Okay. So the integers include zero. It includes numbers like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, go on, go on, go on. And it goes negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative, and so on. So those are integers. Integer, by the way, uh, in Latin means like whole, like W-H-O-L-E, like a soldier that like has all his arms and legs haven't been cut off. So it's whole. So that's how we look at these numbers. They are integers. Okay. Make sure you know those. Have them on a three by five or four by six card or something like that. Make sure you memorize those because they'll be using those words over and over and over. You'll see those words on standardized tests. You'll see them on in, in higher math classes. They're all over the place. So make sure you know those. Okay, let's look at absolute value. This is the symbol of absolute value. There'll be a number inside there. Let's say it's a four. And they'll say the absolute value of four looks like it's you know surrounded by two parallel lines. The definition of absolute value is distance from zero, okay? So <clears throat> if somebody were to say to you, oh, what's the absolute value of four? You would go, oh, how far away from zero is four? It's four, okay? And math you know, nerds argue whether, oh, that's at a positive four or just four, nothing to even waste your time with, okay? Let's say, for example, you have a negative uh, five. And the question is, how far away from zero is negative five? Well, the answer is five, just five, okay? It's like saying, you know, you walk to the store, you go seven miles to the store. Oh, I'm starting out here. If I walk, how far to the store am I? Um, seven miles, okay? What if I turn right around and walk back from the store to home? <clears throat> I don't walk negative seven miles. I'm just seven miles away from home. That's kind of like absolute value. So the absolute value of negative eight would be what? Just eight, right? That, that's how far it is. Okay, the absolute value of 10 minus seven, well, 10 minus seven is three. The absolute value of three is three, right? Okay, the opposite of the absolute value of 14 minus six. Well, let's do this first. What is 14 minus six? It's eight. What's the absolute value of eight? Eight. So now the opposite of eight, we'll attach that at the very end. And the answer to that is negative eight. All right, so let's simplify these. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10, right? On a number line, you can visualize negative 10, right? How far away from zero is negative 10? It's just 10 away, all right? The absolute value of 13 minus eight. Well, 13 minus eight is five. So how far away from zero is five? Five, all right? How about this one? The opposite of the absolute value of 12 
minus 5. Well, 12 minus 5 is 7. The absolute value of 7 is 7. And the opposite of 7 is opposite 7, or negative 7, whatever you want to call it. Okay? This part we're going to do now, and you might have done this before in pre-algebra or in previous classes or whatever, but I'm, if you can, you can kind of skip ahead a little bit or handle it however you'd like to. But we need to be sure... Um, just like adding numbers and memorizing how to deal with arithmetic like 8 plus 5 and 12 minus you know, 9 and things like that, we need to make sure that we are super fast and lightning accurate and quick uh, on adding signed numbers. Because that is like the, the nuts and the bolts, the meat and potatoes, the shoes and socks, the peanut butter and gravy of Algebra 1. you got to be able to do this quickly so you can not even think about it and get on to other things like X's and Y's and formulas. So you just want to make sure you can do arithmetic with signed numbers. Okay, let's visualize this first in case you're a visual learner. If you're a nasal learner, just hold your face up to the computer screen and just kind of sniff the, you know, the, the, the LC, you know, the, just sniff it as much as you, you might help that way. Okay. All right, three minus two visualized is you start at three. A subtraction means you go to the left, 2, and so your answer is 1. Very simple example, okay? So let's look at using these directed numbers and add 2 plus negative 3. So in other words, we're going to go like this. 2 plus negative 3, all right? And if you want to, you could put positive 2 in like a set of parentheses to the same thing. All right, well, we start off with positive 2, right? Here we are, all right? We're going to add negative 3. Well, if we added positive 3, we would go to the right three times, and that would be 5. But we're going to add negative 3, which means we're going to go to the left on the number line. 1, 2, 3 times. We will end up in negative 1. So 2 plus negative 3 is the opposite of 1, or negative 1. Okay? <clears throat> and we'll add negative 3 and positive 2. Let's do it that way. So in other words, we're going to go, what's negative 3 plus and we can put this in parentheses if you want to. Positive 2. Well, let's start at negative 3, right? Well, let's now, there we're there. We'll add positive 2, so we'll go over to the right, 1, and then 2. Lo and behold, it's also negative 1, just like this was, okay? And if you notice, we've got the same two numbers, a positive 2 and a negative 3. And here we have a negative 3 and a positive 2, okay? So we did it in a different order. Well, the point is, order does not matter. You can have 7 plus 8, that's 15. 8 plus 7, that's 15. 12 plus 3, 15. 3 plus 12, 15. If you have negative 10 plus 4, that's a certain answer. If you have uh, 4 plus negative 10, it's the same answer. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do, what order you do them in, as long as you keep those signs connected to the, the number that it's connected to, you'll be okay. All right, let's do another one. We're going to add positive 2 and positive 1 using directed numbers, okay? Well, we start with positive 1, we add, um, excuse me, positive 2, we add 1 to the right, there's our 3, correct? Okay, let's go negative 2 and positive 1. In other words, this is what you're going to see. You'll see negative 2 plus negative 1. Boop. Okay, so we'll start with negative 2, all right? We're going to add a negative 1, which means we're not going to the right, we're going to the left. If you're adding negative 1, you're going to the left on a number line, so you'll end up at negative 3. That's where you are on the number line. Okay? Let's add all of these together. Okay? Let's, we got four of these. So, and again, anytime you need to pause and copy and draw your own number line, feel free to go ahead and write ahead and do that. Okay? So we'll start here with negative 3, and, which is right here. So first, let's add 4, positive 4, which means we're going to the right four times. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? This is where we are now. All right, done and done. Okay, we're going to add negative 2, which means we're going to go to the left 2. That's where we are here. All right, now we're going to add positive 5, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So our answer to this is 4, or if you want to write positive 4, that's okay. If you don't see a symbol in front of a number, it's going to be positive. Okay, let's try another one. Now let's do positive 4 plus negative 2 plus positive 5 plus negative 3, and we'll start at positive 4. Here we are, okay? We're going to add negative 2, which means we go twice over to the left, okay? If we add 5, we kind of go off the end of, end of the thing here, but if we go over 5, there's 3 and then 4 and then 5, we'll end up at 7, right? Now we're going to add negative 3, so we have backwards 6, 
five and four. Well, if you notice, that's exactly the same place we ended up last time was positive four. In fact, these are the same four numbers. We got negative three and four, there's a negative three and there's a four. We got a negative two and a positive five, there's a negative two and a positive five. The point is, it doesn't matter what order these are added in, as long as you keep them correct. Okay, you can string together, you know, uh, you know, 25 different numbers and put them in any, any order you want to. And if you do it correctly, you'll get the same answer every time. So that could be helpful in the future. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, try your practice set and uh, let's try A and then come on back when you're finished. So pause it and try your practice problem A. Okay, A is going to be 4. All right, let's pause it and try B. B is going to be 4.2. That's the absolute value is 4.2. Okay, pause it and try C. Negative 4. All right, that's where you end up. Pause it and try D. All right, D will be negative 8. All right, and then E will be, I kind of jumped ahead there, but go ahead. E will be 5. Okay, all righty. See you guys next time. Y'all take care.